this. And the reason why I chose this problem, because it has fractions. And I know everybody hates fractions. But you need to understand, I didn't, I didn't tell you when I said, all right, well, if you were going to give it a factor, these are in the factor. These are in the form of x minus k, where x is linear. So therefore, I can take each one and set equal to 0, just like I previously did, and then erased. Then you can solve for your zeros. Okay. Now, when applying synthetic division, it doesn't matter what zero you choose. You just need to pick one. So I'll pick the negative um, 5 halves. Then, when going through this, I just take my coefficients. 10, negative 11, 72, and 45. All right. Now remember, when applying synthetic division, this better give me a remainder of zero. If I don't get a remainder of zero, then I did, did dump something wrong. Your 72 should be negative. That is a negative. There you go. So I would have got it wrong. Right? So you got to be very careful. But if I would have done the problem and I said, oh, my remainder is 10, then I would have had to go back to my problem and say, all right, I did something wrong because I was given the factors. <coughs> or if you're given the zeros, you know your remainder should be zero. So let's bring down the first one, 10. All right, let's go over it real quick. How do you do negative 5 halves times negative 5 halves times 10? Right into a fraction, divide across, right? So then this becomes 25. All right, you can do it a couple different ways. You can divide the 2 into the 10 and make it a 5. So therefore, it's a negative 25, actually, right? Right. So then I have negative 11 plus a negative 25, which is a negative 36. So now I have negative 5 halves times a negative 36. Again, put that over 1. And then you can either, what I would just do is just multiply, simplify that to the number 18. So you have 36, 72, 9. And that's going to be now a positive 90, right? Positive 90. So then I have negative 72 plus 90, which is going to be 18. 18 times negative 5 halves. 45. Negative 45. And this becomes 0. So now, I know I did it correctly because I have a remainder constant, linear, quadratic, right? So I could say my quotient, my Q of x, is equal to 10 x squared minus 36 plus 18, right? Yes? Now, however, ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand, though, from this division, from looking at this, though, what do we know about our, what do we know about our answer? We know if we take our answer and multiply it by what, we'll get what? We know our remainder is 0. But if I take my quotient, and if I multiply my quotient by what, what am I going to get? A lot of what, right? If I multiply this, what should I multiply this by? Using my division argument. What can I multiply this by? Yes, one of my factors, one of my d of x's, right? I can take this by uh, my d of x, which was five, or this one, which is 2x plus 5. If I multiply this, if I take 10x squared minus 36, that's an x, right? 36x plus 18. If I multiply that by 2x plus 5, what is that going to equal? That equals what? My f of x, right? My original polynomial, right? And what am I asking? I'm saying, hey, if you're given a factor, find the zeros. Well, when we find zeros, we're not concerned of what the name of the function is. We're concerned that it's equal to 0, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I already know 2x plus 5. I can set that equal to 0. But now, I need to say, well, what about if I set 10x squared minus 36x plus 18 equal to 0? Right? Because now, that's what, I need to, that's what I need to solve. I already solved for this one. I already know that when I set this equal to 0, it gives me this answer. But now, I need to set this equal to 0. And what's helpful about this problem is they already gave us one factor, right? We know we can factor this. And guess what? They gave us a hint. They already gave us one factor, right? They gave us that 5x minus 3. So then pretty much what I need to do 
is say 5x minus 3 times what gives me that? So we know that it has to be 2x, right? And then it would have to be negative 3 times negative 6. And let's just double check that. That's 10x squared. This becomes negative 6, negative 36x. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, now I've found my result last factor. Right? You guys see that's the last missing one. I was already given this one, and we were already given that one. So now I can say that my final, if I was going to write this, I could say, if I was going to write this, f of x equals um, 2x minus 6. Ooh, I should actually let you guys know about this. 5x minus 3, 2x minus 6, 5x minus 3 times 2x plus 5. What do all three of those factors multiply to give me? My f of x, right? So what I've done is I've taken my polynomial and I've written it as a product of the factors. This is what we call linear factorization. And I will ask you to give me a polynomial and write it as a product of its factors. So you are going to have to know how to write it. You are going to have to figure out how to find the factors, all of them, find all the zeros, and write it as a product of all the factors. Now I can find all the zeros, right? So then, to find all the zeros, I just set it equal to zero, and then I set each one equal to zero, which we already did for those two, but then for this one, it would be 6 divided by 2. So therefore, my zeros, by setting these each equal to zero and then solving, I get x equals 3, x equals uh, 3 fifths, and x equals negative 5 halves. And there you go. There's your linear factorization. All right, and I didn't even go over that, but I figured I would just touch base on it.